Okay, so we're gonna work our way back to this diagram. You can see MB3 there in the lower right. This is a video from six years ago where he describes what these nanoparticles are in the air in a video titled, The Truth About Those Things, One Man's Theory. And it's exactly the same as my theory, except I was saying it based on a hunch, artificial magnetic field being produced to protect us from the UV radiation. He obviously has more than a hunch. He has the technical understandings of how it works. But first, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. Some people say there's 2,000. Other reports say 3,000. Some say 10,000 cattle died yesterday or the day before yesterday in Kansas due to the heat. Now, of course, that's ridiculous. as thinking that birds fall out of the sky hundreds at a time from the flu. Heat would take them down one or two here and there at a time. They would not all die on the same day to due, due to heat. So people are speculating what else it could be. Poison, plasma, who knows? Or it could be a spectacle for the purpose of getting you to engage in fight, flight, or freeze. So when you're stretched on that cross of morality and mortality, you can't afford to do the right thing you got to just look to try to survive and throw you into that survival instinct mode with more panic. We'll talk more about that later, but some of these things cannot be avoided and acknowledged as a reality. Such as this, and it will also be linked in the description. Today's video by Mr. MB3, where he shows you the water levels of Lake Mead, Lake Powell, and Lake Granby. There is no overstating this. They are very, very low beyond anything we could have ever imagined. Also linked in this video will be this that was produced within the last week or so by the WTF files. It's only about a 10 minute video, but here in the description, it summarizes it very well in a sentence or two. Earth's magnetic field is continuing to fail the Earth at an alarming rate with seemingly no end in sight, temperatures now predicted to reach 168 by the end of 2022. So the Muse Message theme song, more accurately the videography for this uh, video, this part of this video, will be Robin Schultz Headlights. Now these images are something I showed three years ago at the height of my experience where I was directly channeling the spirit. And I was showing you these images when I would print them out on pieces of paper and show them in front of the screen because I still hadn't done phone to phone. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just show you some of the images here. It's at a water park that's all dried up. And they're still just having fun chasing those headlights. This guy's laying in the dried out pool with his little umbrella drink. These old hags with their leather faces and breast implants and facelifts are still chasing 20 year old dudes. Haven't found anything more meaningful. No purpose in life other than having a good time, having some sex. Here's the boomers. We went to the moon. They're still doing their jazzercising. And she's like, rawr, look at that 20 year old. He's jumping off a diving board with a blindfold on. Sorry, I skipped past something there. These are Tweedledee and Tweedledum dancing around in circles right here. And this girl is walking backwards. The videography is showing us how we've lost our way and what our future holds. If we continue chasing those headlights, which we have. This guy's taking a sand shower. Oh, but the boomers are still jazzercising away. Having fun, acting like none of this is happening. Like all those people who want to keep their five-year plan. They don't want to interrupt their plans. Life is what happens while we were busy making other plans. She's spitting sand out of her mouth right there. There's the dude taking a sand shower some more. I'm, I'm waiting for this next part. Anyway, there's the little girl who's disappointed and realizes this ain't fun. What the hell are we doing here? What kind of insanity is this? Because they're still all just chasing those headlights. 
and have continued to do so for the last three years since I first issued this notice, public service announcement. Remember Richie saying, that MB3, he's a shill. He never mentions the trails. No, he just has the bigger picture so he doesn't bang on and on and on and on and on about it. Guys, what you're looking at right here is the sky from this morning, about 8.30, uh, from Southeast Phoenix, Arizona. Kim trailing was very, very prominent for just a few hours, and then it quit. The afternoon skies were very normal. And as you can clearly see this morning, it was not. And as usual, it's always around the proximity of the sun. Um, in my case, they're normally flying from, like in this video, from March of this year. They're flying from that same direction, in fact, southeast to northwest or from east to west. This particular day, you could tell it was just a, a full-blown, urgent type of situation. You could just feel the urgency literally in the air. I want to say this was March 22nd. And at one time during this video, I took, I think there were 20, 18 or 20 different lines right in through here. All I did with the video was convert it into a negative format so that the lines would be black, the sky would be white. So you could have a little different perspective. Here's my theory. And again, it's just a theory, okay? I'm not a scientist. I am a man who's given this a lot of thought, like most of you have. And this is what I've concluded. I think what we're looking at here is an attempt to save Earth's magnetic shields and atmosphere from something in space. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with the magnetic fields. I think they're sensing something that they're not used to. Um, like we noticed an anomaly back on April 23rd. This was in March. I think there was something that was noticed by whoever monitors or has the fine equipment they noticed a breach in the atmosphere. When they notice a breach, lines, sometimes grids like you see right here, are implemented, probably depending on the severity of the breach. These lines are made up of, and again, this is just a theory. I'm entitled to a theory, just like you are. These lines are made up of these things right here, nanoparticles. This thing is basically a neutralizer. It collects energy, a foreign type of energy that your magnetic shields are not used to. So it needs some help. This thing here is made of aluminum and copper. It's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand times smaller than a human hair. So it can be dispersed in an aerosol form. Because you can set these things on the ground and they're not going to do any good. They have to become airborne. And that's what they are. So they're dispersed by airplanes to be airborne. Independently, they're no good. But in a huge assembly of lines, they're apparently working pretty good. And what they're doing, this is a picture from this morning, May 11th, southeast, flying to the northwest, in the proximity of the sun. You can see how they're thin. Those lines were just laid as I was driving to the school. Uh, 20 minutes later, right here, Coming back to the east, see how they've gotten bigger and fanned out? Those are the same lines. They've collected the energy that they're supposed to, and they disperse and fall to the ground. Maybe they don't fall to the ground. I think maybe they do, though, but it just depends on the strength of that given day and where the energy is coming in at. That's where the planes are uh, sent to, and the spraying begins. That's just my theory. And I'm sticking to it. I've thought of every single scenario under the sun. And that's the only one that I can logically speak of. I don't think there's a sinister attack on humanity. I, I, I don't think that. That's too much work. They've been doing this for, for several years now. Um, I just think it's just an old-fashioned attempt, like Ben Franklin made back in the 1700s. You know, he invented the old lightning rod that captured the energy before it damaged your home, you know. That was through a grounding process. This is terminally airborne grounds. It takes the energy and disperses it in the atmosphere, and it helps the atmosphere contain it. 
the source of this energy? Well, again, that's a that's a whole nother um, subject. Personally, I think it's a combination of two things. I'm a believer in the binary star system. I believe we have two suns. We just can't see the second sun. I don't think you can ever see it. I don't think one day we're going to wake up and um, see two stars in the sky that resemble something from Star Wars. I just don't think that's going to happen. However, I think our sun feels its close approach. And its close approach may be 10 billion, 20 billion miles away, farther. Who knows? But it can still feel it. It can sense it. When it senses it, it changes its energy output from, let's just call it a yellow dwarf. Say all we've ever known, it's got the energy output and the magnetic shields of Earth are used to a yellow dwarf energy output. Well, as the, the second sun approaches and gets closer, it feels it, changes its energy output to say that of a white dwarf. So the spraying begins, and most of it is right in front of the sun because it changes the output of the sun. Pay attention to your surroundings where you're at, guys. You're going to see an absence of man-made color. Look at um, car paint. Look at signs on buildings, mainly ones that face east, south, or southwest. You'll notice those signs are bleached. The color is, is fading rapidly. And that's because of a, uh, an influenced UV light. And I think it's influenced by binary star. And it's affecting our star in a way that they're trying to deal with it the best way that they can. And I think our magnetic shields um, and our, our ionosphere sense it from time to time in the form of disturbances, maybe a disconnect. That's what happened here. They don't fully understand the disconnect phenomenon. Um, when we notice these things, they take the data down and say that it was nothing. Well, it's very obvious it was. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean, you know, it's not something that maybe we can't figure out together. But it's just the way it is. That's another reason I'm motivated to build our own magnetic field observatory. It's not that hard, it's, but it's like anything else. It's funds that, that set us back and keep us from accomplishing these things. I don't like asking for money, guys. I've always done everything on my own. I don't like asking for money. <laughs> That's not me. It's not who I am. But I definitely feel the urgency that this project does need to be done. If not by me, then by somebody else that has the money to do it, get motivated, and do it. Because the magnetic shields of Earth can tell you a wealth of information. Do you understand that? They can give you a whole wealth of knowledge it's like a, a a giant set of ears to outer space and not only that you can monitor the health of the magnetic shields themselves if there is a planetary body near earth or the solar system those instruments are going to tell you do you realize that they're going to tell you but back to the the chemtrails and the spraying, I think that's what's going on, guys. I do think there is a source of energy that the magnetic shields and the atmosphere in general are just having a hard time dealing with. I think they're spraying nanoparticles in the air that are acting as airborne energy diffusers. They're harnessing this energy. Once they're done harnessing their energy and doing or that form of energy and doing their job, they fan out in a fashion just like I saw this morning. And they disperse. They may fall back down to earth. I don't know. But they're probably assessing the damage. And they're probably weighing one against the other. I don't know. I, I have no idea. It's just a theory. But if you went to that Conrad Observatory website. That I told you guys to look at last night. There's another wealth of knowledge. Those people are... Ex Those are the particles of glitter that I've shown when I scrub the burned wood and you can see the glitter running down on the black backdrop of the charcoal. Experts in the magnetic field, they've already told us that it's moved 20 degrees since they've been monitoring it over 170 years. So you can do the math uh, and you can form a you know, respectable conclusion based off of that. 
they said it's weakened 10% in that time as well. So is it weakening just because of day-to-day wear and tear, or is it weakening because of an influence of a second source of energy? I don't know, but we could figure it out if we had the right equipment and we didn't have information being taken away from us. We had a steady flow of data that we could monitor these anomalies. We could figure it out. So that's what's motivated me, guys. Um, and to be quite honest with you, um, I've never shared this with, with you guys, but my theory of what happened to the dinosaurs is not a, a catastrophic comet or a six-mile-wide asteroid that hit in the Gulf of Mexico, the Yucatan. I don't believe that. My, my theory is the magnetic shields went down, and everything on Earth went down with them. That's my theory. I don't believe the, the comet thing hit the Earth and destroyed the atmosphere from within. I think the magnetic shields went down. They've done it before, and they're going to do it again. And I think this is an attempt to at least slow down the process until they can figure out a better approach. And that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. And if you can help with the cause, get some magnetic field equipment, that would be absolutely awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good So now we're going to make a jump, kind of, to a video James True produced a couple days ago called Bigfoot Land. And this is the thumbnail that he used, the thumbnail photo that came from this incident in Idaho where they bust a bunch of guys and they didn't take their backpacks or masks off. They just did a photo op and a lot of people now recognize this symbol. We've been seeing it a lot lately. We've been being told that it's, you know, the Azov Battalion, that it's an old Nazi symbol, that it's the Black Sun. Mr. MB3 just said that he believes in a binary star system and that it is that other sun by many names, Planet X, Nibiru, Nemesis, etc. And so in this video, James True goes through the process that he went through when he realized not all that glitters is gold. And he had to come to some conclusions. And when he realized, anyway, watch this video called Bigfoot Land after you watch this. And my point is, maybe they're showing you that it's all a distraction from what's really going on. Ironically, this comes from a video produced by Call for an Uprising who sounds exactly like RV Truth. Not just his voice, his mannerisms, his phrases of speech, etc. And James recently had an interview with Rose 777 and RV Truth, and RV Truth got up and left the room because he couldn't handle it. Keep that in mind, and we'll get back to that in a minute. Fitness doing this stuff need to be questioned for mental health, but here's the story in Utah. Top prosecutor and sheriff sparred publicly today in a bizarre series of news conferences. County attorney David Levitt called for Sheriff Mike Smith to resign if, as he suspects, an investigation Smith announced this week is politically motivated. KSL investigator Daniela Rivera joins us now to explain. Danny? Well, the Utah County Sheriff's Office announced yesterday they're investigating claims of ritualistic child sexual abuse from decades ago, and they called for victims and witnesses to come forward. They did not release any names or point to specific cases, but today the county attorney did. David Levitt shared in a news conference that he is named in a victim statement from a 10-year-old case. That the Sheriff's Office is using its position for political gain. Claims outlined in a 151-page victim statement from a 2012 case against a therapist named Utah County Attorney David Levitt and several others. Alleging that we were guilty of cannibalizing young children and murdering young children. 
The case was dropped. Levitt says he never knew about the statement naming him until a reporter gave him the document yesterday. The same day, the sheriff's office made a vague announcement calling for victims of ritualistic sexual child abuse between 1990 and 2010 to come forward. Now, Levitt calls that effort a political attack. Why is it occurring seven days before the ballots drop in my election? Levitt now calling for an investigation into the sheriff's office, accusing law enforcement of leaking the victim's statement. And if there is such a link, then I call upon him to resign. And taking aim at the woman who named him years ago, over and over repeating this claim about her mental health. By that tragically mentally ill woman. How dare you? These are victims of crime who have mustered the courage to come forward and this is what we call them, is mentally ill. Utah County Sheriff Mike Smith holding his own news conference a couple hours later. He released a lot of information. He did. That we never would have released. He notes Levitt is the one who publicly attached himself to their investigation. And they intend to continue forward, along with several other agencies involved, including the FBI. But they are not naming who we they consider to be suspects. Forward. Again, we won't be intimidated by Mr. Levitt by his attempts to uh, derail our investigation. We will continue to do our jobs. Levitt insists the fact that the old case was dropped signals the claims were baseless, but admits he has not reviewed it himself. This case was dismissed almost 10 years before I took office. And you have access to the case file then, I, correct? I, I, I can find it. Yeah, it's in the archive someplace. Have you not looked at it? No, it's going to take several days. Meanwhile, the sheriff says their investigation is based on more than one person's um, word. There are multiple victims involved in this case, and there are multiple victims corroborating information between their accounts. The sheriff says his agency did not release any documents related to the investigation, but the KSL investigators did obtain a copy of the victim statement, and we did so through a public records request to the Provo Police Department. Dan and Dini. So first of all, these type of images were not included on the news broadcast. Those were inserted by RV Truth. I mean, a uh, call for an uprising. These type of images with the boff mat and the uh, the other rituals, I think these were inserted by Call for an Uprising. These were not part of the news broadcast. Ironically, this sheriff's name is Mike Smith. The same name as my uncle who died the same day my mother died in that plasma fire. So my first instinct when I heard this was to contact this sheriff. Say, dude. If you got the courage to strike right at the heart of the cabal, I got the ammo for you to send down range. If you got the mechanism, which is the position of authority that you hold, and the will to press forward, I and three other people are part of the microchipping program, which is right at the heart of the same agenda that you are now striking at. But then it kind of occurred to me, maybe this is some sort of honeypot. Maybe the honeypot is just to draw people into that frequency range of thought, feeling, and emotion. And out of your God frequency range. To draw you into the survival instinct and out of your higher order thinking. Your intuition, when you are threatened... Your reptile brain takes over and says, we ain't got time for all that philosophy and nuanced ideas of ideals and principles and morals. There's a threat here. I'm going to take over and then I'll hand you back the controls once there's no longer a threat. And when you're in that threatened state of mind, you lose your ability to think straight. You lose a lot of your abilities mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. The other reason that might be a honeypot is because it is so sensationalized. Not that that stuff don't exist. I don't know. Maybe it does. But then uh, contrast that sheriff and that story that seems Epstein-ish in nature in its salaciousness. Contrast that sheriff with Alfredo here, who simply tweeted that he'd die for his country. 
and he's been wrapped up. If you watch his story, you'll understand the nature of the situation we're in here. No longer are 1939 uh, Germany references a metaphor or a stretch at all. So that sheriff wouldn't get very far if he would attempt to do such a thing when this guy, a top cop, received the treatment he did for tweets. So I'm reconsidering my rush to go contact Sheriff Mike Smith and say, hey, you want to put it all on the line? You probably need some people in the trench with you who are just as willing, ready, and able and have no alternative. There is no world to turn back to if we don't handle this and drain this swamp. But this is on a biblical scale and the higher, the higher law is already sifting and sorting. So it's not up to me to go take the reins and try to control and guide and drive this transformation by injecting my two cents and trying to push the ball in a direction. It's already moving. There's so many moving parts to this. I was the commencement speaker for Earth School graduation kickoff three years ago. So I don't know if I'm going to be too quick to go contact Sheriff Mike Smith because that seems like it might be a bit of a distraction. A distraction straight out of Bigfoot land where they dug up a 10-year-old case and they've got a sheriff and Utah County attorney who's running for re-election, I believe. That's what the situation is. It seems like it could be a theatrical charade between the two that's already worked out behind the scenes just like WWF wrestlers. Yeah, I dated myself. I know it's not WWF anymore. It doesn't matter. Just don't be so quick to jump on board any train or any movement of people or any cause that you feel inclined to contribute to. Because our will to be good people has been weaponized against us. I can say that when someone, if I ever mention I got a microchip in my head, I know they turn off just as quickly as if I said something about satanic ritual abuse and cannibalizing eating children. Both are in the same category that makes people just turn their brain off. And say, okay, uh, I'm out of here. This guy's so full of it. He just said he's got a microchip in his head. Zetetically, I have experienced that. That is my world. I know three other people with that experience. I haven't met a Satanist. I know there's pedophiles out there, but I've never uh, really come across that type of stuff. So when I do, maybe I'll be more inclined. But... Just think about the concept that James True is presenting in this whole video. Like when he says that the dome blew off Epstein Island, so it's obviously a paper mache facade. That's a utility building, and that door on the side is painted on. And none of the truthers that latched onto that want to accept reality as it's presented to them, because that's their pet theory, and they're not going to let it go. And that's what draws witness. So they're not in it for truth. They're in it for other reasons. So watch this video and then go back and watch that report again from Utah and really question what it is you're looking at, what you're hearing. And just because it's so sensational, maybe take a breather, step back and really ask yourself, who benefits? What could the possible motives be and am I getting taken for a ride here? Maybe I should just go with what I know, what I've experienced. And recognize that reality is being unraveled from so many different directions. You must have discernment. You will not know the good guys from the bad guys, right from wrong, up from down. 
That's why you need a solid foundation internally, a personally relevant, personally meaningful set of morals and principles, ethics, underlying priorities by which you govern your own standards of behavior. Otherwise, there's a movement for everybody. They got a train. They got a ship of fools going down the river of insanity that's going to appeal to you. If you don't become the uh, uh, become the author of your own authority is what I was going to say, but essentially recognize what you've learned over the years, take it into account and know that you don't have to pull the levers. You just got to get to the point where you're not mad at God when God does it. And God's filtering us out right now and those levers are going to be pulled. It's not up to you and me to make it happen. We're just along for the ride. What is up to me personally is to witness and observe and not avert my gaze to something more comfortable. That is not the reason why I would look away from Sheriff Smith and go jump on that bandwagon. I'm all in. I carry the evidence with me everywhere I go and when and where it's time to hold court, I am ready. I'm living on borrowed time as it is. I'm looking forward to finding out what's on the other side of this epic experience that we're all having. Because this is the final phase of life as we know it. Whatever this place is, it it won't resemble the world we've always known in a very short time. So these type of movements, these type of ships of insanity going down, a ship of fools going down the river of insanity are going to keep popping up everywhere. Whether it's food shortage, food shortage, anything to get you focused on something, panicking, full of anxiety and fear and distress, fighting the good fight against those evil, wicked people. Whether it's the guys that showed up to disrupt a pride rally or the sheriff and the Utah County attorney over there duking it out over some uh, even more salacious stuff that gets you your blood boiling even more. Those operations are everywhere right now. So just be cautious. Right now, there is enough being revealed. We know enough about what actually is happening. Plasma fire alone. Let alone all the other stuff that I've shared throughout the past few years. We know enough about what really is happening right now that we know time is short. Very, very short. So it's not necessary to go dig into a bucket of what could be happening and I got I got to uncover this and expose that. Wheels are in motion. We're past the point of no return. They're socially engineering a filtration process. And for people who haven't found a meaning and a purpose in their life, they will join on to one of these bandwagons. Hope you found some sort of purpose and meaning and direction in your life to where you don't have to jump on one of these bandwagons. I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. I really love to watch them roll. No longer sitting on the merry-go-round. I just had to let it go. A little John Lennon, I'll throw the link in the description. People say I'm crazy, dreaming my life away. Well, they give me all kinds of advice designed to enlighten me. Well, they shake their head and they look at me as if I've lost my mind. I tell them there's no worries. I'm just sitting here doing time. I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. Just sitting here doing time? Yeah. Yeah. And I told you, the sheriff, the warden, is handing out deferred sentences for good behavior when I made the analogy of a prison rather than earth school graduation. 
But so many people said they don't want out of this prison. They want to keep peeling potatoes and doing laundry. We're about to see what's on the outside. We are about to be initiated into the larger world. This perimeter is about to be breached and people here to liberate us will be attacked by those of us who still think we have something to defend, something to fight for, a cause. Recognize you're a slave and that none of this is required, is requiring your participation. Through this process we're all being put through, the wheels are already going around, and I'm just going to sit back and watch it. When I see my opportunity, I'm all in. But I ain't going to go chasing uh, white rabbits down rabbit holes. And that's what a lot of these are. And I can't find my stick right now. But a lot of it's to distract you from what's really happening. And just as a quick promo for an upcoming James True episode that I don't know what the details are or the content of it are yet, titled Pirates of Libertatia, like Bertaria, but Libertatia. Remember, when I went to Missouri, I went to Independence, Missouri. Pursuit of liberty, independence, freedom. Difference between a slave and a prisoner, you remember that? Slave doesn't want out. Prisoner wants to see what's out on the other side of the wall. We're about to get that opportunity. But this piece that you're looking at here came from, I am quite certain of it, an Air Force base in Japan. I found two lunch trays with this identical image on them somewhere deep in my mom's old junk. And when I asked her about it, she said, oh, I don't know. I think I got them at a yard sale or something. I said, no, this looks like something dad got from the Air Force. No, no, I got it from a, got it from a yard sale or something. This was like 15 years ago. I cut this out and I took one of the trays. Both of the trays had what looked like a very early version of a RFID embedded within the fiberglass. It was about half inch wide, an inch or two long, and the identical same spot on the two trays. Like these were from a chow hall. And in hindsight, I'm pretty sure my mom just started telling lies when she knew, oh, I'm not supposed to have that and you're not supposed to, no, nah, nah, nah. I took this out to my dad when we went on a motorcycle riding trip and pulled this out in front of him and said, you ever seen this? And the look on his face told me yes and the words coming from his mouth told me no. Anyway, I got a lot more gravy. I'm just trying to piece it all together and do a data dump here so I can get caught up to current. So... We'll do another one tomorrow.